stress you to try it today's class we'll be learning how to make this beautiful shirt with color it is standard shirt and it has this beautiful rush effect at the side it's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly this is something you would like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you rush skirt shirt i'm cutting both my front and back together so you can see how i place this ideally i don't have enough fabric your back panel should be two inches longer than your front so that you have something like this for your back and front so your front can your back can just fold like this to your front but i'm making mine the same length so the shoulder is going to be the same not that the back is going to be extending towards the front okay so now i have my front underneath it you can see the extension i've added buttons to this so i'm going i'm leaving two inches extension for my button placket before placing my back panel so now this is my back on top and this is my front underneath this with these two inches extension so next thing you're going to do now is to draft your basic body panel on this it's very simple to make and i'm just going to draft it directly and we've been doing this a lot so by now we'll know how to do this so the shoulder i'm working with is 18 inches 16 inches 16 divided by 2 is going to give me 8 inches so you can see where i'm starting my measurement from the short one which is the back okay so i have 8 inches here for the ham hole the ham hole i'm working with is 9 inches the waistline the half length is 15 and half and the full length i'm working with is 24 inches but i'm adding 2 inches allowance to it to hem it so i have all this now and then I'm going to make them into a straight line. So for my front neckline, I'll make it three inches by three inches for the front, and then for the back, it's going to be three inches by one inch. Okay, and then I'm going to connect this. Okay, I'll cut the back first before lifting it up to cut my front and then on my front uh, on my shoulder i'll go down by one inch from my shoulder slope and then i'm going to con connect it sorry like this so here i'll take my bust measurement and the bust i'm working with is 44 inches so the very by two is going to give me 11 inches okay so Okay, so I have 11 inches there and then I'm going to mark it. So when you're taking this measurement, it shouldn't be too tight because you want it to be free because of that rush that you'll be doing on this side. So for my waist, the waist I'm working with is 36 inches. That is where by four is going to give me 9 inches. So here I'm going to mark 9 inches. There is no doubt it's going to be a free blouse. In fact, I'll add around half an inch for each to this and then the hip i'm working with is 48 inches so 48 divided by 4 is going to give me 12 inches so i mark 12 inches here also for the hip and then i'm going to connect all these measurements so you can see that i even added more here because i want it to be as free as possible so all my measurements now are very loose i took the measurement very loosely because i want to give enough room for the rush effect so now the next thing i'm doing now is to connect my arm hole using my curve so from here now i'm going to connect my arm hole and then i'm going to have my necessary allowance on this side so you can use one inch it shouldn't be too much because it's going to be doubling as my it's going to be doubling as the channel for my room so i'm just using one inch but i'm going to add half an inch to it because i want to weave it so i don't want it too short by the time i weave it so i just added half an inch to it and then i'm going to connect this as my allowance so you should use your curve for this i'm just using my free hand so here on the lower part you can go up by two inches and curve it to the sides but i'm not going to do that because i'm sure by the time i 
drag it it's going to give me whatever shape that i want there so now i'm going to cut this out so for the neckline i'm going to cut the back first and then you can see where i noted my front neckline three inches so here i'm going to extend my two inches flacket allowance and then from there i'm going to curve it to the actual neckline so you should use your curve for all of this and then my front neckline now is cut out so i'm going to slash this open so that i can have two pieces for my front Okay, so you can see how easy it is to cut this shirt so now i'm going to work on the front first i'm going to notch my allowance my two inches allowance so that i can fold it and so so you can add gum stay to this because of the button holes and the button that i want to place but the fabric I'm using is quite strong, so I'm not going to be adding anything to it. I'm just going to fold it. Okay, so to fold the plaquettes, because my front and back is the same, okay? I want to fold this towards the front. So if you're using something that the wrong side is very different from the right side and you don't want the wrong side to be showing, you may want to hard face into this. So to fold it now, I'm not folding it in I'm folding it outwards. And you can see that I notched my uh, where my allowance stops so now i'm going to fold it like half an inch or quarter of an inch first and then after folding it like that i'm going to fold it again to where my notch stops which is here so i'm folding like a quarter of an inch and then i'm going to fold over to where my notch stops now and then i'm going to hold it with my pin so you go over to the neckline where you have another notch you fold it once like this and then fold it over to where the notch stops again and then i'm going to hold it with my pin so this now i'm going to do all throughout so you can actually iron it down to make the work easier for you when you fold the first one you can iron it before you make your next fold i'm just going to fold it like this okay and then i'm going to hold it with my pin so if you're adding interface into this you know you have to if you're folding it outwards it means your interface has to be on the right side of your fabric like this and then if you're folding it inwards the interfacing will be on the wrong side of your fabric so whichever one you're doing you just have to make sure that you're doing it correctly so now i'm going to you can see how i'm doing this i'm going to fold it and make sure that i have something equal on all of them and then i'll hold it with my frame first before i go ahead to iron it down and then i'm going to sew it so if you don't want to sew it if you don't want any seam line showing there you can use your aiming gum you can place it in between and then use it to iron it down but i'm going to sew this so what i have done here now i'm going to do to the second piece of the front remember we have slashed the front into two separate pieces so now we have two pieces for our front bodies so i'll do this for the second side also okay so i'm going to, have to do this to the other side also and they're just going to lap on each other like this so you're hanging it down and then i'm going to sew it on both sides so for you to know that you're correct now when you place it on top of each other now you will try to please place uh, take your back panel and place the neckline on it so they have to match if they don't match it means you have folded too much of the allow you have folded more than the allowance that you left so if you know that you need much allowance it, i left two inches for mine you can leave around two and a half inches so that you have enough fabric to fold but two inches is okay if you can just follow what you have so you can see my neckline now that they are exactly the same which means it's correct so i'll go ahead now and sew down my placket okay so i'm gonna have to sew it down and this is what i have i sew it on both sides so now the next thing i'm going to do now is to place my front on my back and then i'm going to join the shoulder together and then also i'm going to join it on the side like this 
okay so now i'm gonna have to sew it on the shoulder and also on the side so now when you get to the side now you open your seam allowance remember i said it's going to be doubling as our casing for the rope so now when you open your seam allowance you fold it in and then you sew it down so that you have a casing here so for me i'm not going to be hemming I mean this because it's, I want it to be this length. If I hem it, it's going to be shorter and I don't have enough fabric for this. So if you're going to hem it, on the hem line, you're going to fold your seam allowance first. Fold it in like this. Okay. Before you hem. Before you do... Okay, okay, so like I was saying, if you want to hem it, remember you don't want this part to close because your rope is going through it. So now if you are hemming this, before you sew your side together, you are going to first hem it separately like this. So when you hem it separately and you sew it together, you'll be able to fold this in and still have your rope pass through it. Because if you fold it and then you hem it like this, you can see that it is completely closed. So if you want to hem it, before you join your side seam, you hem your back separately, hem your front separately, before you join it on the shoulder and then you create your casing. I hope you understand that you cannot create your casing and then hem it because it's going to close your space for you so now i'm going to go ahead now and fold this and then sew on it on both sides so i've done this to the first side you can see it now and then i have this space here to pass my rope to and this are my two casing so i'll do the same thing for this side then i'm going to go ahead and cut a long group like this and then i'm going to sew it and turn it out before i pass it around this side okay so i've gone ahead to sew it down and then the next thing now is i turned my rope and then i just passed it through the casing so you can see okay let me stretch it out so that we can see so this is the rope i passed it from one hand then through the other hand so you can see and then it came out on the other hand so i've done this for the two sides so this is the stage that my shirt is in now and you can see that i'm almost through with this so the next thing now is to cut out my sleeve i would have loved to use a long sleeve for this ball i have very little of my fabric left this is actually a a shirt with palazzo trouser and i use three yards for both so this is what i have left so i'm just going to cut a short sleeve and then i'm going to add it to my ham hole then after that i'm going to use a basic sleeve i have the tutorial already on the channel i'm going to measure what i have on my neckline and cut my shirt collar so i have a tutorial on how to draft and sew a shirt collar also on the channel then i'm going to make my I'm going to fix my button holes to it and then add my buttons. So I have a tutorial on how you can drop, uh, make your button hole manually also on the channel. So I'll be linking all of them down below in the description because I don't want us to keep repeating what we have already done so that the video is not going to be unnecessarily long. So I'm going to do all this now then bring it back to show us what this shirt is looking like. I have to fix my, my color my sleeve and my buttons so this is what i have and this is the rush effect we have on this side so you can actually drag this as much as you want it's totally up to you and then the story on how to make this palazzo is already on the channel so i'm going to link it in the description box down below i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.